Okay, our first example today, I'll differentiate h of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 1 times x negative 2 plus 3x negative 3. And um, on this one, I want to use the product rule, which is on that yellow sheet. It's this one here. Um, the product rule, if you have a function of x being multiplied by a function of x, the product rule looks like this, and it looks rather complicated. What I want you to notice is it breaks down into four specific things. You have f of x, which is the first function, exactly as it's written, times the derivative of the second function, and then the second function, exactly as it's written, <coughs> times the derivative of the first function. Um, a shortcut to memorize the product rule, 1d2, so 1 function 1 times derivative of function 2, 1d2 plus 2 function 2 d1 derivative of function 1. So that's the little mnemonic device you can use to memorize the product rule. Um, as with the power rule, I think yesterday I think we kind of understood a little bit better of what the, product, the power rule is about, which was we had to have a specific structure to use it. The product rule has the same idea. There has to be a specific structure to use it. We're looking for a function of x being multiplied by a function of x. What that looks like function of x being multiplied by a function of x. So x stuff being multiplied by some other x stuff. Okay, that's when the product rule can be used. In the case of h of x here, function 1 is x squared minus 3x plus 1, and function 2 is x negative 2 plus 3x negative 3. If I apply the product rule, h prime of x is going to equal 1, d2 to begin with. So 1 is going to be x squared minus 3x plus 1, exactly as it's written. Don't change it whatsoever. d2 is derivative of function 2. Function 2 is just a polynomial structured function, so we're going to apply the power rule to differentiate that. Negative 2, x to the negative third, minus 9, x to the negative fourth. Be careful, since they're negative powers, we're subtracting one from negative power. We actually add the numbers. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. That's the 1d2 part. Then we do plus, and then we do 2d1, which is the second function exactly as it is without modifying it whatsoever. And d1 is just the derivative of the first function. Once again, a polynomial structure. Apply the power rule. We're going to get 2x minus 3 for the derivative of that. Okay. That is the application of the product rule. And again, that gives me the derivative. It's not simplified yet. To simplify it, I need to apply the distributive property. I'm going to multiply, let's go with negative 2x cubed to the negative third times all this stuff. So that'll be um, negative 2x to the negative 1 plus 6x to the negative 2 minus 2x to the negative third. That's just negative 2x cubed times everything. And then negative 9x to the negative 4th times all this stuff. I'm going to get negative 9x to the 4th times negative, or sorry, positive x squared is going to be negative 9x to the negative 2nd. Negative 9x to the negative 4th times negative 3x is going to be positive 27x to the negative 3rd. And negative 9x to the negative 4th times 1 is going to be or negative 9x to the negative 4th. Then I've got this also, this is just a FOIL on this one, binomial times binomial. So if I FOIL it, first times first, x to the negative 2 times 2x. Notice it's plus, so whatever signs I get is what I get, right? <coughs> so x to the negative 2 times 2x is going to be positive 2x to the negative first. x to the negative 2 times negative 3 is going to be minus 3x to the negative 2. Uh, 3x to the negative third times 2x is going to be plus 6x to the negative 2. And finally, last times last, 3x negative third times negative 3 is going to be negative 9x negative third. So we just do some basic algebra there, a little distributive property on the first one, a little foiling on the second one, also basically the distributive property. Get all these products, and then we simply have to add like terms. So h prime of x in simplest form is going to equal, I'm going to go with x to the negative first power is the highest power, right? Yeah. 
Negative one is bigger than negative two, which is bigger than negative three, and so on. So if we go descending order, I got negative two x negative first, and positive two x negative first, and that's it, and they cancel. Kind of nice. All right. Probably won't always be like that. Uh, no, it's coincidental. It doesn't have to happen. Uh, we got positive six x negative second. We've got negative nine x negative second. We've got negative three x negative second. We've got positive six x negative second. Uh, positive 12 minus 12, that also cancels. Also coincidental. Hopefully not, not, not everything cancels. All right, continuing on. I've got negative 2x, negative third. Positive 27x, negative third. And negative 9x, negative third. So uh, negative 11 and 27 make positive 16. So we'll x, roll. negative third. And finally, I've got negative 9x, negative fourth. That's it. And there is the derivative. The main idea of this problem is as establishing the structure of the problem that establishes what rule to use to differentiate, and then using algebra to simplify. Um, the fact that I got function of x times function of x, that requires the product rule. When I see just a polynomial, power rule is going to happen. But when I see stuff times stuff, I'm going to have to use a product rule. It's a multiplication of things. Now, let me just show you one thing. Um, I've kind of been harping on this the last couple days, and I want to really drive this home. Anytime you can do algebra before you do calculus, it makes the problem easier. This wasn't ridiculously hard. I mean, you've got to be careful, and there's a lot of multiplications to happen, right? But as far as the level of difficulty within the math there, it's not super hard math. But look at the problem to begin with. You see what I did here, where I multiply these two things to get all this product here? You notice the original problem had that same structure, so the idea of multiplying that out first to create this power structure that we've been working with. Let me just grab this real quick. Go to a new page. Imagine if before I differentiate it all, I notice that if I take x to the negative second times all this stuff, I'm going to get h of x, because right now I'm just doing algebra, right? x to the negative second times x to the second makes x to the 0, better known as 1. x to the negative second times negative 3x is negative 3x to the negative first. x to the negative second times 1 is positive x to the negative second. And if I do 3x to the negative third times all this stuff, 3x to the negative third times x squared is, neg is positive 3x to the negative 1. 3x to the negative third times negative 3x is negative 9x to the negative second. And 3x to the negative third times 1 is going to be positive 3x to the minus third. Add up like terms there, h of x ends up equaling 1, those cancel minus 8x to the negative second plus 3x to the negative third. This expression is equivalent to that expression because I just performed some algebra, did some distributive property, got a simpler expression to differentiate. Now I'm looking at a power structure instead of a product structure. So now the power rule is allowed to be used. If I do h prime of x at this point, 0 plus 16 x to the negative third minus 9 x to the negative fourth get the same answer, but this is a little bit more efficient. All right. With that being said, as long as you're dealing with polynomial structures, that's possible every single time. When you start involving trigonometric structures, x times sine of x, you don't have that ability. So practicing the product rule is important. If you get a situation where the product rule is necessary, the original problem, it's good to practice the skill to get good at it. Recognition of structure is the main key to this problem. Noticing it's a product, so I have to use the product rule. Or it's a polynomial structure, I have to use the power rule. That's kind of the, the thought that needs to start entering your mind each time you're differentiating. Anytime your job says, find the derivative, find f prime, differentiate, I'm going to use this rule because it looks like this. I'm going to use that rule because it looks like that. that. That's the key to being good at differentiation. Recognizing a structure to know which rule to use to do it. But just know that if you can perform algebra first, calculus tends to be easier. If you do algebra second, 
you know, it just gets to be a little bit more of a bulkier problem. So just keep that in mind that there's options a lot of times. You get the same answer, but sometimes there's one, one way that's easier than the other.